Hello, I'm Dan from Ace of Rentals and Sales, and today we're going to be taking a look at our 2023 Coachman Freelander 27QB. I'll be showing you everything you need to know about the outside and the inside, so you'll be all set and prepared when you decide to rent from us. We'll start off with the dimensions of this RV. We like to say it's about 12 and a half feet, which means watch out for places like parking garages and drive throughs We like to say the width is about 10 and a half feet, and the length is 29 and a half feet. The first thing we have on our driver's side is the generator. The generator is basically a substitute for when you're not plugged in at a campsite. So it's going to be powering all of the electrical appliances. It'll be your TV, your microwave, your AC unit, your outlets. This runs on engine gas, so as long as you're at least about a quarter tank full of gas, you can expect this to work. The only reason you'd have to come out here is in the case where you accidentally run the AC and the microwave at the same time. That'll be too powerful for this generator and it'll cause it to trip. In that case, all you want to do is just come out here, take the top off, and then you have your breaker right here. This will flip back if you run the AC and the microwave at the same time. So all you want to do is just flip it towards you like that. Everything else is handled inside the RV. Next, I'll point out our hot water heater. So expect this to be hot and don't put your hand there. We have an outside shower as well. It's just a little faucet, so uh, if, you're, if you have sand or dirt you want to wash off before you head inside, you can just use this to wash yourself off. This here is our power cord connector. So you're going to plug in our 30 amp power cord here at your campsite in order to get all the electrical appliances inside to work. Once again, once you're plugged in, you won't need the generator at all. We have a lot of different inlets over here, so I'll go through them one by one. We have our TV cable inlet here, and there's one on the passenger side as well. We'll give you the TV cable, so if you have cable hookup at your campsite, you can just plug it in here and then plug the other end at the post at your campsite. If you don't have cable hookup, that's all right. There's also an antenna for this RV, so you can find local channels through the air instead. We also have this uh, inlet you won't have to worry about. This is the tank flush valve. That's just for the next customer, so don't worry about that. Now we have two different water inlets over here. We have our city water inlet on the left side, and we have our fresh water inlet on the right side. There's a big difference, although you'll be using the same hose for both of them. The fresh water, this one right here, is to fill up the tank itself. So if you're on the road and you want to use water from the sink or the shower or the, or the toilet, you're going to be taking it off of the tank, and this will be how you fill it up. That's opposed to the city water. You want to take the water from the campsite instead of from your own tank. So when you're at the campsite, you're going to plug it into the city water and instead. It'll bypass the tank and go straight into the pipes. We have our gas inlet over here. It'll just take regular 87 gas, so no premium or diesel. Next, I'll show you how to dump out the waste tanks. We have our dumping outlet right in the back of the driver's side here. We'll give you this hose. You just want to take this part with the teeth and clip it onto the outlet right here. And you're going to take the other end with the elbow and stick this in the ground at your sewer or wherever else you're dumping at your campsite, etc. From there, we have two different color-coded valves. We have our gray valve for our gray tank, that's our sink and our shower water. And we have our black valve for our black tank, that's just the toilet. When it's pushed in like this, that means it's closed. And if you pull it out, that means it's open. So we hook it up here. We recommend you open up the black one first and then the gray one to kind of flush it out. And when the gauges inside tell you that the tanks are empty, you can push it back in, unscrew the hose, and you're all set. We have a big storage compartment in the back here. This will span across this side all the way to the passenger side. So we also have these bags here with all the hoses and cords that you'll need. This is the sewer hose that I just showed you. We have our power cord connector right here. Once again, this is 30 amp. And we have one more bag here. In this bag, we'll have this black wire, which is your TV cable. We have a 30 amp to 15 amp adapter for our power cord. And we also have this white hose here, which is your city water and fresh water hose. Around to the back of the RV, there isn't much to know apart from our rear view camera, which will go back about eight feet once it's on. And we have our service ladder up to the roof, which we advise our customers not to use. Now onto the passenger side of this RV. We have the other side of that big storage compartment. Over here, we have our propane outlet. So if you have an external grill at your campsite, you can hook it up in here and it will take propane off of the RV's tank. 
Next we have our second TV cable inlet right here. And next to that we have just some power outlets on the outside. Just make sure you're plugged into shore power at your campsite or your generator is running for these to work. I'll also point out our hot furnace on the passenger side. Again, just make sure not to touch it, expect it to be hot. And in the front of the passenger side, we have our propane tank. The propane tank will last about a week or so before you'll have to refill it. If you do have to refill it, truck stations and campsites will do it for you. Uh, we recommend you leave it on since your fridge runs on it when you're not plugged in at a campsite. But it'll also be for things like your hot water, your stove, your oven, and your furnace. That concludes the outside of this RV. So we're going to head inside right here. We have our cabin door with a detachable screen door right here. We're going to start right at the inside of this RV. To my left we have our fire extinguisher. And to my right we have our fuse box and circuit breaker box and we'll give you some extra fuses up in the front. Next up we have our patio light which is for the outside, we have our entry light which is the galley lights right above my head, and we also have our switch for the awning. The awning is going to run on the house battery which is actually this dial right here. Uh, you can leave it on but it'll be charged when you're driving or when the generator is on or even when you're plugged into shore power. For service purposes the house battery is actually right underneath my feet here. But for the awning, if it's not coming out, just make sure that the keys are out of the ignition and the parking brake is on. For safety purposes, we have our smoke detector right above the sofa here. And down here we have our carbon monoxide and propane detector. Over here is probably the most important part of the inside of the RV. We have our control panel, which will tell you pretty much everything you need to know. I'll start in the middle right here. We have the levels of all the tanks, so as I push down on each of these buttons, these will light up from empty, one-third, two-thirds, to full. For example, I push down on LPG, which is your propane, you can see that that's full. Your battery is two-thirds charged, fresh water is empty, we have our black tank, which is empty, and our gray tank, which is also empty. Switching this on will turn on our water pump. This will take water from the tank. So if you're plugged into city water at your campsite, you don't need to have this on. It's only if you're on the road or you're not plugged in. Below that here, we have both our gas water heater and our electric water heater. Uh, if you're on the road, you're not plugged in, you want to heat up your water, we'll use propane gas as we turn this on to heat up our water. It'll take up to 15 minutes to heat it up, and we recommend you only have it on if you need that hot water. If you are plugged in uh, with 30 amp at your campsite, you can use electricity instead to save propane. And we have our tank heaters down here. If you switch this on, this is uh, in the case that you're going to a place where it's below freezing, this will prevent your uh, waste tanks from uh, freezing. To our right side here, we have everything for our generator. Down here we have a meter that will tell you the total number of hours it's been running ever since it was manufactured. This is a brand new RV, so it says 0.5 hours. You can use this to gauge how long you've had the generator running. We recommend you have it on for no more than three hours at a time, and then have it off for about two or three hours to prevent it from overheating. If you want to start the generator, you can either hold down generator prime here, or you can hold down stop. I'll hold down generator prime until this light turns on. That means the generator is ready to start. Then you're gonna hold down start here, give it a few seconds. And now you can hear the generator is running. Once the microwave beeps, as it did just now, that means all the electrical appliances that will be using the generator are working. With the generator on, I can show you how to find channels on the TV. So first, you're going to press source right here, and you're going to make sure that your source select is set to TV. From there, you're going to press menu right here. You're going to go over to channel, and then we can switch between air, which is the antenna, or if you're plugged into cable at your campsite, we can use cable. I'm going to go back to air here, I'm going to go down one, press auto scan, yes, and then it'll take about five minutes to find channels for you. This here is our thermometer. Uh, you just want to keep pressing this button mode to cycle through the options. So right now it says fan on, it's just the fan. Once you see cool here, that means the AC is on, you just heard the compressor turn on. This is the furnace, which is going to use a bit of propane and a bit of electricity. And press it again to turn back to off. This will adjust the fan speed, and this will control the temperature. 
To turn off the generator, you just want to hold down stop here. All the way in the back here, we have our master bedroom with lots of storage up and around. We have a skylight on the ceiling and we have a TV over here. By my sides here, we have our bathroom. So to our left, we have our shower. And to my right here, we have our sink and our toilet. This is just a standard sink here. These are bottles of solution for the toilet. You can just pour that down there to freshen it up in case the smell comes up from the black tank. The toilet paper is RV specific, so you have to go to like the camping section at Walmart or campsites will also sell it for you. As for the toilet, you just want to push down on this pedal here. Just make sure the water pump is on for this to work. Next up, we have our kitchen area. So we have our standard house microwave up here. Again, just make sure not to run the AC and the microwave at the same time when you're using the generator. Down here, we have our stove, which uses propane. For each of our three burners here, we have our igniter on the left side. So for our left one, I'm just gonna turn it to high, push it in, and use the igniter, and there we go. Once you're done, just wait a few minutes before you put the top back on, otherwise the propane might get trapped in there. We also have our standard kitchen sink right here. For the fridge, we have a little switch here. Just make sure that this is on for our fridge to work. As far as the inside goes, we have the fridge here and the freezer up top here. The fridge will run on propane when you're not plugged in. But when you do plug into a campsite, it'll automatically switch over to electricity. So no matter what, your fridge is gonna stay on. To use the windows, you wanna pull out these latches and you'll be able to pull it open like this and close it. As for the blinds, they'll just pull down and push up. In the living area in the front here, we have our sofa and we have our dinette. We have three seat belts here and four seat belts here. Both of these turn into beds, and I'll show you that right now. For the sofa, you just want to pull it out like a futon like this. For the dinette, you want to take the tabletop off. There's Velcro here. We can also take the legs out like this. Next, you want to take the tabletop and slide it into these slots here. Finally, take the cushions, lay them across like this, and here's your bed. We also have some storage area up top here. We can make this overhead bunk into a bunk bed just by pulling this cushion down here. The front of the RV is mostly like a trunk, so we have our AC unit over here, um, we have our radio, Bluetooth, and we have our rear view camera in the back. And we also have our rear view camera display here. Um, once you put the RV in reverse, this will automatically pop up. By my left foot here, we have our parking brake. So this is just to engage it. And to release it, we have this right here. As far as the keys go, we have our ignition right here. This oval key is for our cabin door. And for our storage compartments outside, we have the silver key. That'll be all for our 2023 Coachman Freelander 27QB. I've been Dan from Ace Free Rentals and Sales, and have a great trip.